Welcome to episode 6 of the Unemployed Journeyman in the French Ligue 1 with Monaco. And today we've got a league game against Lyon, who are direct rivals for a Champions League spot. Then we've got a final Europa League game in the group stage against Union Berlin. And I need to bring you up to speed on what has been quite an extraordinary £100 million transfer window. <laughs> Okay, so before I forget, because you know what my memories are like, we've had the review or preview of our youth intake. It's meant to be an excellent intake. This is a terrific group of players coming through and has the potential to be a real golden generation for the club. How many times have we heard that in this save and in previous saves that I've done, like bottoms up and rebuilds and whatever else, that we're meant to have a golden generation and it ends up being a bit of a flop. But we have got A ratings for defensive midfielders. One of our defensive midfielders has the potential to go far. And also an A rank for strikers. We have two forwards who are considered to be fine prospects. We we'll also see for goalkeepers, central midfielders and wingers. But if we get some a decent defensive midfield and a couple of decent strikers, I'll be quite happy with that because we do need to start looking at our dev centre in terms of bringing players through. So this looks promising. Right, that's the youth preview done. Let's go to the transfer side of things because as I say it's been a 100 million pound transfer window in terms of players going in players going out in terms of the players going out we we'll cover those first you would have been with me when George Lopez left in September so in January I think you would have known about Munoz going to Shanghai Port for 5 million we then Brill Mbolo I wanted rid of him so I offered him out went to intermediaries and all this sort of stuff Al Khalij of Saudi Arabia came in with a £13.25 million offer. He's 32, 33 years old. What is he? 32 years old. If you look at what he's done for us this season, two goals, one assist from 10 appearances. Bear in mind, six of those have been sub-appearance, to be fair. I just thought £13 million for a player that's not got too long left on his contract. We're, we're going to accept that. Then Alexander Golovin, who we did try selling for £25 million in the summer, but he turned the contract offer down. Al Tai came in for him with six months left of his contract, £12.75 million, absolutely going to take that. So that's what, £25, £31 million so far in terms of coming in. Then Gustav Isaacson, who, because of squad registration rules, we've not been able to uh, register him for Europe. He's not been happy. Al Weider came in for a £10.25 million pound offer I weren't going to turn that down so he's gone as well that's 41 million in terms of players coming in then Wilfred Singo Arsenal came in for him now he's 29 years old he had 18 months left on his contract he has been very decent for us I can't deny that 7.15 one goal three assists with 16 appearances nine of those appearances have also been from the subs bench he's not a player I would have wanted to have got rid of but when Arsenal were offering me 46.5 million raising to 57 million, I weren't going to say no to that. So if you add that 46.5 million onto the 41 million, that's what, 87.5 million, something like that. Then Remy Carr and William Lorenz have gone out on loan as well. But yeah, to bring in basically 87, 88 million with the potential of it going up to near on 100 million, I, I weren't going to say no to it. It's... It just seems like a, a no-brainer. Then in terms of players coming in, you would have known about Adul's. So we then had Nahil Cordoba has come in from Arsenal of South America, from Argentina. And he came in on a free transfer. I'm really happy with this signing. Three-star kind of bit of five-star potential to get him in on a free transfer. And so far, he's only played one league game for us, but he did play for us in the cup as well. He's played two games, scored two goals. He scored both of them goals in one game. He can play for us in the central midfield area here as a Mazala or an advanced playmaker. He can also play out on the right or the left. We've got the possibility of giving him plenty of game time. I'm really excited by him, I've got to say. Then Erez Levy, Levi, something like that, from Maccabi Tel Aviv. These players you would have known about, these first three from what was already agreed. But he's coming for three million, three star kind of really five star potential, 18 years old. The other guy is 19 years old. Look at this for potential. He will eventually as well become homegrown for us as well. And his physicals are really, really, really good. His finishing 
He's got 16. He is aggressive and determined. He can play the advanced forward role that we want him to play. And again, so far, one league game, three goals. He's got a hat-trick, 9.40. Altogether, he did play a couple of cup games. He's got one goal in there as well. And he's played in the Europa League and got two goals in there as well. I don't think that was for us, though. And so, yeah, that's Erez Levi. Then Mateus Fernandez, purely a backup option. He's 25 years old. He's two and a half star with three star potential. I'm not expecting a great deal from him. He was really just brought in as backup to a midfield, especially with Golovin going, who can play in the central midfield areas. He can do the advanced playmaker and do the Mazala. We're getting plenty of support in that area. And then with Singo going, we obviously needed to buy someone, well, not, not just Singo, actually, with Munoz as well. We had a backup left back and a backup right back sold for grand. I mean, if we say 57 million, it will get to 57 million. 57 million plus five is 62 million pounds coming in for our two backup fullbacks. We bought in Killian Sardella from Club Bruges for 23 and a half million. And he can play anywhere along the back. He, he wants to be a centre back. He's five foot ten with no jumping reach and very minimal heading. So he's unlikely to really play in there unless we're in a real sticky patch. But he can play left back to a three star standard. He can play right back to a three star standard as well. He's got 15 for crossing, decent acceleration and pace. I think he could be a really decent player as well. He wants to be an important player for us. He's not going to be, so we'll have to deal with that down the line. But 23.5 million. For him, in from Club Bruges, he's not made the league appearance for us yet, but he has played in the Cup and in the Europa League. He was solid for the 20, 25 minutes that he came on for. We also have a player coming in on a free transfer. Um, where's their free transfer gone? We have a player coming on a free transfer. Where was he? Give me my future sales. Giannis Katagas on a free transfer. Basically, he's the same as the other guy. He can play on the right-hand side. He can play in the middle, six foot one. Okay jumping reach, okay heading. He will be needed to play on the left as well. He's 21-year-old German. He's, he's decent. You know, he's got determination. He's got fitness. If we look at his scout report, he's got the potential to be... He's two and a half star at the moment. He's got the potential to be four and a half, maybe even five star. And... He would probably be more suited on the left-hand side where we don't have an attacking fullback because he basically can't cross. But I just thought for a free transfer, when we get him come in, he could have, if he has a value like that of around £20 million and we're able to sell him in a season or two's time for £10-15 million, pounds, for example, then that's a nice little bit of profit on him as well. So that's the transfers up to speed. So yeah, in terms of, like I said, we had about £87 million coming in from players we sold. We've then uh, spent, what, 4.1, 27.6 million. So it's actually about 110 million pound transfer window so far. And I've got to say, I weren't expecting that in January. I really wasn't expecting to get players out like that in January. But what it does mean is if we look at the finances, 88.9 million pounds in the bank. More importantly, we've got 102 million pounds in the transfer budget. Boys and girls, we are going to have some fun in the transfer special at the end of the season. And then we've got about £300,000, £362,000 spare in the wage budget. I have set up a recruitment focus, as you see here, for homegrown players. If I just show you those a minute. So we've got a few in there at the moment that are homegrown. They've come from other focuses, I think. Well, actually, Sergio Fonseca has come in from... This is loan listed at the moment, 21 years old. He can play up top, two star at the moment with four to four and a half star uh, potential ability. I will also be looking out for the Wonder Kids list as well to see any of those that come in. But in the summer, I'm very much going to be looking at shopping from this list here because we need to get some homegrown players in. We're fine at the moment. We've been able to register everyone for the Europa League going forward. But in order to be a bit more comfortable, we need to bring in a few homegrown players and just let some of the others go. We do have one issue, which I'll show you about when we get to the Matchday Centre for the game against Leon. I'll show you the issue we have that I've recently discovered. Um, 
But yeah, let's go on with the schedule now. Let's have a look at what's happened since you were last with us. We've played quite a few games. You were with us for Paris Saint-Germain and Osiek, the defeat against Paris Saint-Germain. We were pretty good in that game, actually. I weren't, much like the Villarreal defeat, I weren't too disheartened by that. Osiek, we were poor. We, you know, that, that was not a particularly good game. Since then, we've played Brest. We beat them 3-1 with goals from Robert Navarro, Eunice Mentz with a penalty and Dorian Kors getting on the score sheet. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that completely wrong, but Dorian Kors is his name as far as I'm concerned. Then we played Toulouse and won 2-0 with two goals from Robert Navarro in that game as well. Then we come up against AZ Alkmaar in the Europa League and lost that 1-1. It was always going to be a tricky game. AZ Alkmaar are a good team. It's away from home. They scored in the 81st minute. Yeah, that, that was tough. Then we played Nice and drew 1-1 against them. Eddie Nketiah scoring against me for Nice in the 90th minute. I thought we'd won it with Vanderson's goal on 72, but then Eddie Nketiah equalising for them really was a dagger through the heart. Then we played Lyon, and th this was ridiculous. We played them in the French Cup ninth round. I mean, how many rounds do you need in the cup competition? We played them in the ninth round. Yunus Moussa gave us a 1-0 lead. Then Nahul Cordoba with goals in the 67th and 69th minute. 3-0 up. We were cruising. And then Sivertson scoring in the 90th minute and a Barashina own goal from a Sivertson shot in the 93rd minute made that look a lot more flattering than it had any right to be, really. Then we played Rennes in the league. A 4-1 win at home there. Navarro with a goal and Erez Levi with a hat-trick. Then it was FC Martigues, something like that. A 3-1. They're basically they're non-league. They're a non-league French team. Um, yeah, they're in a national division, so yeah, non-league as far as I'm concerned. A 3-1 win. They did score in the 94th minute to make it look a little bit better. We were a very dominant team in this game. Enrique, Kalala and Levi getting on the score sheet there. We did change their central midfield. We have Fafana, Fernandez, and Cordoba in the centre midfield for that game. Then we played Trabs and Sport. Now, bear in mind, Trabs and Sport at the time were top of the Europa League group. And we beat them 5-2, absolutely smashed them. We went 3-0 up, Espinosa, Levi and Vanderson getting on the score sheet before Hamilton pulled it back for 3-1 and Gunez pulled it back for 3-2. At this point, I was starting to panic. But then Levi made it 4-2 and Vanderson with his second as well to make it 5-2. We were very, very good in that game. If we could play like that, just maybe be a little bit better in defence for the rest of the season, then we're going to have no problems at all. Brings us on to today, we've got Union Berlin in the Europa League in part two of the video, and Lyon is up next in the uh, French Ligue 1. They are sixth in the league at the moment. If you have a look at the league table, PSG top with 53 points. I mean, they're, they're 11 points ahead of us. They have played a game more, but yeah, they're, they're runaway leaders. They're still unbeaten. They could do an invincible season. We are second with 42 points. We're four points ahead of Nice, who have played a game more. They're on 38. Marseille have played a game more. They're on 37. Then you've got RC Lons on 36. Lyon on 33. So the worst case to know is if we lose today, we will still be second in the table. But at the moment, we're six points clear of Lons, who are in fifth place. And basically, we, like I said before, we need to finish top four. That's the aim for the season. So if we can win today against Lyon, then we would move nine points ahead of the team in fifth place. And more importantly, we would move, what, 12 points ahead of Lyon, who would probably be closer to challenging us than Lons, I would have imagined anyway. But Robert Navarro, by the way, who's not really first choice for us, or hasn't been, he's second in the league for average rating, 7.47. And... Uh, Bartford Bruggen second on the clean sheets list with nine clean sheets. Right, let's get into the match day centre for the first of today's two games at home against Leon in Ligue 1. Right, welcome to the match day centre for the game against Leon, and we have pretty much a full bill of health with Daniel Mahir being the only injury. He's out for another five to ten days, and then we're fully fit. Touch wood. Now the issue that I did pick up on when it comes to registering players is that. With bringing in, I think it was um, Cordoba, we've now in a situation where we have too many foreign players to be able to register. You can only register four non-EU players. So Christian Garcia, our very high 
highly rated young striker, I've had to leave him out and put Dorian Cause in instead. And so what I need to do is in the summer transfer window, I need to look at who our non-EU players are and make a decision on who I want to keep and who I don't want to keep. Because, yeah, we, we've got too many, basically. By one, but we have got too many. Right, this is a team that we're going out with for the game against Leon. Verbruggen in goal, Enrique left back, Espinosa right back, Barracina and Vandenberg in the middle, Fafana, Musa and Puxtas in the centre of midfield. I'm wondering why I've not got Andre Santos in here. So I'm just going to move him over. So it's Santos, Musa and Puxtas. I'm playing Puxtas because he's come to me moaning that he's not getting enough game time. I did dismiss him and kind of say tough luck. But then everybody else got upset as well. So I've agreed to play him. Then Navarro and Vanderson out wide with Levi up top. We have got Abel Ruiz back and available on the bench. Sardella, Fernandez, Cordoba from our new signings are also all on the bench. So let's get into it. The game against Leon, this is a really big game. We do need to, I would say, worst, we need to not lose this game. And who have they got on? I mean, Ryan Sessinen on. I mean, that Sivertson we know well about. He was very good against us. Laporte is in their team. Who have they got on the bench? Salamakers is on there. Veloso, Alan St. Maximin. So there, there's some very decent players in that Leon team. No doubt about that. They are one of the big boys in French football. And we need, when it comes back, we need to sort out our little tablet thing that you have on screen. But the first highlight, Vandenberg to Santos to Puxtas, Vanderson, Musa. It's gone forward to Levi. Oh, Levi, you're 16 finishing. I'd have expected a, a goal from that. It's going to be interesting to see how he does because if the way he's played so far is anything to go by, he really does look like he could be a very promising player for us and I'm very excited to have him in their team. Right, next highlight is with Leon. They're on the counter-attack here and they have got men forward as well. They're catching us napping a little bit. This is dangerous, but they've put it wide. They'll be very disappointed with that because that was a great opportunity for them. At the moment, we are dominating possession. But as I said before, it's about what you do with the possession, not just about having the ball. Right, next highlight is again with Leon. Come on, boys, we're the home team. Let, let's be in control of this game. Right, we've won it back. Levi wins it back, gives it to Vanderson. He's on the right-hand side. He finds Puxtas. I mean, they're fighting amongst themselves for the ball. Here is Espinosa. Puts the ball in and Levi has scored. It's his seventh goal of the season. I'm not sure all them seven goals are for us. I can remember him scoring four, I think. Now five. And then there's immediate highlight. You know I hate immediate highlights. But we have got the ball. Puxtas has got it on the right-hand side. Gives it to Espinosa. To Vanderson. Goes infield to Andre Santos. He's been a bit quiet lately, Santos. He is in the anchor role now, though, not the advanced playmaker. We need to bear that in mind. I've just given the ball away with a careless pass. Can we win it back? Yep, we won it back. Enrique's got it. Barracina. By the way, Barracina is now our new club captain now that Golovin's left. Here's Musa. Gets the ball over to Vanderson. To Puxtas. It's a goal. It's 2 0. Rokas Puxtas scores. 17th minute of the match, and we are 2 0 up. Now, let's not throw away a two-goal lead like we do at so many of my clubs. I'm starting to think the problem's me, not the club. It happened at Fukushima. It happened at Tokyo. We've had it happen here at Monaco in a short time here already as well. Here's Vandenberg to Espinosa. Oh, Vanderson could be through here. Vanderson's got the ball. Gives it to Espinosa. Puts it into the box. And Navarro with his sixth goal of the season. Robert Navarro. I don't know if anyone's going to get the assist for that. It seemed to come off somebody else. Is Espinosa is getting the assist, his second assist of the game. We are 3 0. This is dreamland. 3 0 up against Leon. I mean, we were 3 0 up last time we played him and end up 3 2 with a goal in the 90th and 95th minute, remember. So let's not take it for granted. But three goals from five shots on target, that is pretty clinical for us, I have to say. And we go in at half time 3 0 up. I'm happy with the number of shots on target so far. Keep it up. I think I'll say that. Everyone seems happy. Hopefully, they're not going to be getting complacent. And, yeah, I mean, look at that table. That looks nice, doesn't it? Nine points ahead of RC Lons. Right, here's Musa. He's coming forward. Gives it to Levi. Andre Santos 
didn't quite get to it. They now are counter-attacking. They go for a shot from distance and it's over. But I mean, if they're going to shoot from that far out, I don't really have too much of an issue with that. Cause it would mean if they do score, it's going to be an absolute worldy anyway. With dominating possession, better passes completed, better XG, more shots on target. Everything is going really rather well. On that note, though, we will make a substitution. So, oh, didn't mean to click on him. Sardella, I think, will come on for Espinosa because he's looking a bit tired. Vanderson can come off and we can bring... I'm going to bring Cordova on, actually, rather than Abel Ruiz. And we bring him on on the right-hand side. I have kind of got my eye on Cordova taking over from Vanderson because Vanderson largely has been very disappointed, much like Golovin was. And I have got my eye on either getting a replacement or Cordova taking that spot. The cross comes in from Leon, but Verbruggen comes out and claims it nicely. We'll be building from the back because that's what we do. It's part of my identity as a manager. Here's Cordova. Keeps the ball, gives it to Andre Santos, to Vandenberg, to Santos, to Barashina. Musa, by the way, is their vice captain. So, yeah, Barashina's our captain. Musa, our vice captain. Here's Navarro to Barashina, to Musa, to Puxtus. Levi's through and Levi scored. Come on. Oh, I really want this boy to succeed. And he's absolutely doing what he needs to do to succeed as well. That's his second goal of the game. And I think what we'll do is... Right, Enrique... Mm, don't, that's the downside. We don't really have anyone to bring on for Enrique. What we can do is we can swap them around, put Vandenberg out wide, and then bring on Odul's in the centre. So that kind of fixes that. Musa is complacent. He can come off and... Fafana can come on. We put him in the anchor role and move Santos into the Mazala role. That'll be the last of our substitutions for now. So a bit of a shifty around at the back there. Right, we have a free kick. Andre Santos will take it. Enrique not on the field. Oh, see the bar. Chow Enrique is a usual set piece taker, but like I say, he's not on the pitch. But 4 0, we are leading Monaco, uh, leading Leon. This has been a very, very good game. And I think we'll bring on Fernandez for Puxtus for the last five minutes as well to complete our five substitutions. And I am very happy with this performance. This has been excellent. 4-0 win against Leon at home in the league. A deserved 4-0 win as well. Two goals from our new striker, Erez Levi. And if we look at the table, we are eight points behind PSG and we are nine points clear of RC Lons in fifth place at the exact halfway point in the season. Right, we'll have a quick look, make sure we've got nobody out injured. Barashina set for a pay increase. Levi on form, we will absolutely give him his flowers for that. And yeah, I need to register flowers. I'll just register exactly who we had in here last time. Oh. Just so you can see, Bobek obviously isn't registered. We, we want to sell him anyway or let him go, whatever. So, yeah, we need another homegrown player here as well that can meet that target. And then we will be fine on the homegrown rule. But like I say, we do just want to get rid of some players so that we can comfortably be within that as well. Right, we'll confirm the squad selection for that. And I'll meet you in the matchday centre for the uh, Europa League game against Union Berlin. <music> Welcome back to the video. And I'll put you back before we get to the matchday centre, actually, because we've had an offer for Hugo Barracina, our club captain, a 23-year-old centre-back. He's got a value of between 11 and a half to 13 million. And Sevilla have come in with an upfront offer of 9.5 million, with 3.7 million in four six monthly installments and then 4.3 million after he's played 50 games and a 20 percent set on clause now he's not one of our homegrown players so if we had the right offer coming i wouldn't be too adverse to selling him i don't want to sell him i will admit he's a six foot five center back for example he's got 18 for jumping reach he's decent marking decent or good marking decent tackling decent heading 
his positioning, his leadership, his concentration, his natural fitness, his physicals are really, really good. So I don't really have any intention of sending. So I'm going to reject this offer. But if they come in with an offer that blows my mind, like I did with Singo, I will take it. But we are going to reject that offer. And hopefully, he only had a slight interest. So hopefully he's not going to be too downhearted about it. Right, let's get into the match day centre now for the game against Union Berlin at home in the Europa League. Right, here we are in the match day centre and basically we're unchanged. For Bruggen in goal, Enrique left back, Espinosa right back, Barracina and Vandenberg in the centre of defence, Santos, Musa and Puxtas in the midfield, Navarro and Vanderson out wide with Levi up top. We do have Christian Garcia available to us on the bench. We are able to register him in Europe, just not in the league. So let's get into it. And as things stand at the moment, before these games start, we are eighth in the Europa League group stage. So we are basically qualifying automatically. If we beat Union Berlin, we will qualify ahead of them. They're one point ahead of us. They're in fourth place. And they are a very decent team, actually. They look really good in this game. So here we are at the moment in eighth, Union Berlin in fourth. We do have home advantage. We need to try and make it count. Enrique with the free kick and it's gone over the bar. I mean, he scored that one absolute stunner that I showed you earlier on in the season last week. And now he seems to think he can always do it. And he hasn't replicated. He's only scored one other goal since then. That's from open play. Right, Musa heads on to Navarro. He's in the box. Navarro, oh, it's over the bar. The, that's what frustrates with this team is we get into such great positions and we don't get the shots on target. Navarro with the corner though, in towards the near post and I think that was, I'm not sure who it was actually, but someone got a header to it, but it went straight to the goalkeeper. Right, next highlight, Puxtas to Vanderson, back to Santos to Puxtas, back to Vandenberg. What can he do? He's going to go back to Verbruggen, to Barracina. I do like how we play out from the back and how nice some of their passing can look when it goes right. Here's Navarro spreading the ball out to the right-hand side to Vanderson. He's found Puxtas. Levi. Oh, errors, Levi. That was another opportunity. Right, we've intercepted the ball in midfield. Espinosa to Puxtas. We need to make this count. Come on, Puxtas. Oh, my word. What has he done? It's gone out for a corner, so I'm assuming it's a really good save from the goalkeeper. He hit that with some power. Enrique will take the corner. It was a poor corner, to be fair. And he's going to let it go out for a throw-in. And that's where the highlight ends. I mean, we have dominated these opening 20 minutes. 74% possession. Four shots on target. We need to make these shots count. We really do. As things stand at the moment, we're in ninth. So we do need more than just a draw against Union Berlin. But if we can take our chances, we... Stand a very good chance of winning the game. But for, when you don't take your chances, you always think it's going to come back to bite you on the backside. Right, Verbruggen has the ball. He'll play it out from the back. He's, he's going long. Okay. That's not what I sign up for. But we do get the ball and keep the ball. So it was a good bit of play. Here's Navarro on the left-hand side to Musa to Puxtas. Just a bit of composure. That's all that's needed. Union Berlin have come back into it towards the in the second half of the first half, if that makes sense. But here's Vanderson coming forward. He's not got a great deal with him, I have to say. Is he going to go alone? Is that a penalty? That is a penalty. Who have we got on penalties? We don't get many penalties. I have to. I will say that Musa is on penalties. He is their best penalty taker that's on the pitch at the moment because Ruiz and Garcia are not there. So I'm not going to fiddle with anything I'm not going to touch it we'll just leave it for Yunus Musa. he has scored penalties before he tends to go straight down the middle. I think he's scored two penalties and he tends to go straight down the middle each time so if they've done their homework the goalkeeper will stand where he is and just catch it but here's Musa. oh he's, he's, I mean to be fair he's not gone down the middle he's gone to the right hand side but he's missed the penalty Navarro's missed a penalty for us this season as well Enrique with the corner to Espinosa and he just Punts it out of play. Oh, we should be one up. The chances we've had. Oh. Bear in mind, the board wants us to get to the quarterfinals of this competition. So we really do need to actually win this game. Right, here's Espinosa. 
to Puxtus, goes back to Espinosa. Obviously, if we don't win the game, we'll still be in the knockout playoff round. So it's not like we're out of the competition. But it just means it's two more games to add to what we've already got to play this season. But here's Puxtus now to Musa. Gives it to Enrique, to Navarro. Musa, is he going to take a shot? He is, and it goes well. I'm getting annoyed at Musa now. Because he's missed that penalty and he's just frustrating me. Levi looks like he's picked up a knock as well, so we're probably going to have to take him off. So, oh, hang on. Looks like we've got a substitution. Uh, the highlight incoming it is Vanderson with a free kick. Oh, it's kind of gone through everybody there. Navarro now going around the outside, and that was such a weak effort. That was an abomination. Right, Levi will have to come off. He's not having the greatest of game anyway. Abel Ruiz, I think, will bring on. And what we've got here, so Vanderson's on a 6.4. Moose is coming off because he's annoyed me. And we'll bring Fafana on, swap him and Santos over. And I think Cordoba can come on for Vanderson as well. So we're going to make a triple change on 66 minutes. Don't often make triple change. It's getting a bit more frequent, to be honest. But I do tend to do two, two, and then one. But... Yeah, this ain't going great at the moment. Right, Navarro with the corner. Oh, he scored! Barracina, his second goal of the season. It'll also count to a goal from a corner as well, which is always lovely, lovely stuff. We've got the lead. We now need to hold on to that lead. If we can score a second, I'd be absolutely thrilled. Right, here's Navarro. He's not played particularly well. Santos. Oh, it's a goal. It's 2-0. I think it's an own goal. Yeah, it is. Diogo Leti with the own goal, and at that point, I'm going to make a couple of changes. Enrique can come off, he's looking quite tired. Sardella can come on for him, and Navarro can come off. I think what we do is bring on Christian Garcia and move him and Ruiz around. 2-0 with 10 minutes to go. Can we see this out? It's not throw this away now, boys. I know you like to make my heart beat as fast as possible. But let's just see this out. They do have the ball on this highlight. On their left-hand side. He's got a bit of space in front of him as well. He gets a cross in. And, oh, for crying out loud. The referee's got his finger in his ear. Will you actually disallow a goal for the other team? You do it for us a lot. You're going to do it for the other team? You're going to disallow their goal? Yes. Come on. The referee wants us to qualify automatically as well. We are in sixth, by the way, at the moment. There are other teams still got to play. But we keep our 2 0 lead. Should have been 3 0 if Moose had scored that penalty. Ramage, the goalkeeper for Union Berlin. He's actually a decent goalkeeper in, in real life as well, Ramage. Right, well done from Cordova. Wins the ball. Gives it to Espinosa, to Fafana, to Andre Santos, Barracina. Ball over the top for Abel Ruiz. That was a good ball. And Garcia, oh! I mean, Christian Garcia, if you're going to score goals for us in Europe, you're going to make me feel bad and regret actually leaving you out of my league 1 team. But there you go. We've won the game 2-0. We deserve to win as well. We were the much better team. Barracina and an own goal getting us the win. And if we look at the group stage table, oh, there is nobody else to play. I thought, I thought we were, I thought we were like on the first day. I know because it's, I'm getting confused with the Champions League here. We all play on the same day in the Europa League. So we are through automatically to the round of 16, and we will be playing against one of these teams. I bet we get Union Berlin again. But we'll be playing against one of these teams in the round of 16. So we're on course to get through to the quarterfinals of the competition. What I will do is I'll give you also, if we have a look at the schedule, in the next round of the French Cup, we've got uh, Nice. I'm, I'm not really that worried about showing the French Cup, so I'm not really that bothered about it. Um, we did have Leon in the ninth round and Martiguez in the tenth round. We've now got Nice in the eleventh. So we're not having an easy time of it, to be fair, with Leon and Nice in the first three rounds. The semi-final draw has taken place for that competition. And if we win against Nice, then we play either Clermont or Saint-Étienne of Ligue, Ligue 2 in the quarterfinals. So that's where that stands. Going back to the schedule, I think what we'll probably do is the 
we're going to be awaiting the draw for the Europa League, but at the moment, we'll probably look at coming back for something, something like here, Orcs there, and then whoever we're playing in the Europa League round of 16. So we'll probably get through February, come back for Orcs there, and the Europa League first leg game, and see where we go from there. In the meantime, we are second in Ligue 1. Everything's going really rather well. It's been a great episode. 4-0 win and a 2-0 win. Goals from our new young striker as well. Everything's been great. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Would really appreciate that if you could. And I'll see you tomorrow for episode 7.